This is a very Franciscan gospel. St. Francis loved the birds and the bees, the stars and the trees. He calls them brother and sister, that lovely hippie movie, Brother Sun and Sister Moon. But he never says brother visa card and sister checkbook. Brother visa card and sister checkbook. Jesus tells us to make friends for ourselves with dishonest wealth. But I don't think he meant to think of the visa card as our brother or sister. I think we misinterpret it if that's how we think, that we're supposed to make friends with the wealth. That's silly. St. Francis would agree with Jesus here. We're supposed to make friends by means of dishonest wealth. Now, what does the by means of mean? We use the wealth to make friends to make eternal friends. The church fathers, when they interpret this passage, tend to think it goes something like this. Wealth is dishonest, not because it's not supposed to be the wealth we steal. This is any wealth. Any wealth is dishonest because it appears to belong to us, but it really doesn't. It's deceptive. And it's deceptive also Because it's an easy trap. This kind of earthly wealth is an easy trap. It's easy to get attached to wealth. Even small things. Even small things. You know, we brothers, (laughs) with Brother Roderick back there, I'm pointing, we live together in a religious community, and both of our orders are very firmly founded on poverty. Poverty. But of course, even when we really and technically give up everything, we need things like toothbrushes to get through the day. (laughs) If we don't brush our teeth, things are going to go worse and we're going to have to spend more money. So we have toothbrushes in our cells. And people, even how completely absurd it is, can get attached to those little things in our cells in the most absurd kind of of way. We who've given up everything get, get attached to the silly little things that we have And if we lose that toothbrush, we get angry at the person who may have accidentally dropped it in the sink or in the toilet or we get mad at ourselves if we do that, right? Because we're attached to it. We've made friends with the dishonest wealth, not by means of the dishonest wealth with other people. The good, the ideal circumstance that the church fathers are talking about is the wealth doesn't belong to us. We make friends with the dishonest wealth by giving it as gifts to those who we really want to be our friends. Of course, that should mean all of our brothers and sisters, but in particular, the poor. This is feast day, is St. Martin's feast day. St. Martin of Tours used to be called Martinmas in English. In England, if you go there, they still call it Martinmas. It was a great day for giving all sorts of little gifts to the poor in the Middle Ages. People would go out and give alms. And for All Souls Day, and I think even today, they'd have these things that were called soul cakes that were like little cookies you would give to poor people. And they would, it's sort of the origin of trick-or-treating. So they would come and sing a little song that was basically, I'm a poor person, uh, give me some alms and I'll pray for you when you're dead. (laughs) I love that custom. It's beautiful. But you get a very visible instance of what it means to make friends with dishonest wealth. We give as gifts to those who we want to be our patrons. It's a lovely custom. We know the story of St. Martin. Where does this giving alms to the poor come from on Martinmas? The famous Martin was a, a soldier, a general, a lieutenant, and he had converted to Christianity. He was thinking of converting to Christianity. I believe he was just a catechumen at this time. So he was in RCIA, right? He's riding along and he sees a poor man who asks him in the name of Christ to give him some clothing. And he takes off his military cloak and cuts it in half because he has nothing else to give. But he wants to give something in the name of Christ. He cuts half of it off and gives it to the man, the poor man. And then later, 
the vision that he has is Jesus coming to him in prayer, clothed with the half of the cloak that he gave the poor man. We clothe Jesus in the poor. That's to whom we want to give the wealth. We give it to our brothers and sisters. We want to be friends with all of those around us. But in particular, as Jesus says, you don't just want to be like the Gentiles that give gifts to those who can return them. The greatest kind of gift giving is to give it to those who can't return it. Our morning meditation was to remember everything that God has given us, to look out at the beautiful trees and the the sunshine. We're not yet into snow, so there's still beautiful things to look at. But gratitude is not only about me and what God has given me. It's about, on one hand, what God has given us, but we also hear it in that antiphon for the Alleluia. Jesus Christ became poor, although he was rich, so that by his poverty we might become rich. Gratitude, being really grateful for what you have, is to see everything as a gift, not to hold on to it, and spurs us to be spiritually poor. Even if you're not a Franciscan or a Dominican friar, we're all called to live poverty, spiritual poverty. And just like for us, that has real impacts in our lives. So for every Christian, it has a real and concrete impact and should have in your life. The only difference is we have a rule that tells us exactly what the impact of poverty is on our life, and you don't have a rule of life that's going to tell you, so you need to figure it out. But we are all called to live poverty together. That's what it is to live gratitude. I'm very struck as the spirit of gratitude that we're talking about. There's an old book beautiful spiritual book from France by uh, Jean-Pierre de Cussade. He was a Jesuit, Père, Père de Cussade. He, um, he wrote a beautiful book that has the, the major title is Abandonment to Divine Providence. The subtitle, though, is what I want to focus on, The Sacrament of the Present Moment. The whole book in Abandonment to Divine Providence is a practice of putting yourself in the presence of God at every moment. But his practice is to remember the past and the future don't exist. It reminds me of my Buddhist friends. Nothing really exists, just you and God right now. Just you and God right now. It's a beautiful frame of mind to put our minds in, in that sacrament of the present moment. That's where God is. We were talking about symbols we see through. As we're passing from the first set of wings to the second. We're putting beside, putting behind us all of our worries about the past or the future. We're learning to live in the now. St. Martin, when he died, had a beautiful, beautiful death that's recorded for us by Sulpicia Severus, who was a, a friend of his, On his deathbed, the brothers, his monastic brothers, and the priests of his diocese said, Father Martin, don't leave us. The wolves will come. We need your help. He says, I am ready to go. I want to be with Jesus. But he starts crying. He says, I want to be with you. You need me. I'll ask Jesus to perform a miracle if he wants. And he who had worked so many miracles started praying. And Jesus didn't fulfill his desire. But you can see on his deathbed, he wanted to be completely at the service of others. He eventually does go to God and prays for his brothers from heaven. We're putting beside ourselves all of our worries to truly be grateful and to look in love with those around us. So we shouldn't be thinking too much today of sister visa card or brother cell phone, but rather of the father who's with us and who holds us all in the palm of his hands 
in the present.